It's Brad Phillips, look at this. We've got the Arrows Viper. I put flap rounds on mine. It's gonna be so cool, AS3X and safe. We use the AR630 and we're using the... Venom pack. Venom 13 3S. Mm -hmm. So not 4S yet, probably would do it. And our CG's right in the middle of the two spots, as you can see. We are gonna launch this in safe just because I've had better luck in safe. So we're gonna do that now, just verifying safe works. Verifying everything looks good. We have not adjusted anything. So throttle cuts off. This is our maiden flight. We're going to launch that way just in case we have a miserable failure. Full throttle. I'm launching it, just holding the body, but just make sure you don't squish. You know what? I'll use the factory provided holes. How about that? Yep, we're good. Not a lot of ups there. That's 50, 60%. I'm going out of safe now. There we go. Oh man, that thing flies really good. I just need a little trim on the elevator. That's 50% power. There's 100% on 3S. Looks absolutely phenomenal. There's our trim, okay? Oh yeah, we're good. Full throttle. Here we go. Man, that thing flies so good. I want a rudder now though. Look how slow that thing goes. That is awesome. Not usually something you hear when you're speaking about jets. Look how slow <laughs> it goes. But I'm serious, a plane that flies slow will fly fast. Man, that looks good. We have a little bit of roll I gotta correct on the ailerons. There we go, and a little bit too much on the stabilizer, so I need to bring down. I need to bring down the aileron gains. Actually, I'm gonna bring it all down. Just turn the knob some. Man, just really loving the way this flies. But I feel like I got a little bit of yaw in there though, which is not necessarily good. So on 4S, this thing would scream, but man, does that look good. And we're flying in the bowl. That's not a very big space. Let's slow down. Let's try the flaps now. There's takeoff flaps. Ooh, a little bit of down, way too much down. There's full landing flaps, having to really hold that stick. Okay, out of the flaps all together into the full throttle. I'm gonna have to take out my mix. What do you think of this camera crew? It looks really good. I think it looks awesome. I want to see how slow I can get it without flaps. Wow. You want to come about 13 steps toward the center of the approach? Thank you. Perfect. That's where you need to be right there. There you go. Now I got a little bit of flexibility on my space. Okay. It's just flying like a rock solid plane. I'm super happy with it. I about bit those trees though. Look at this, no rudder. Oh, that was dangerous. I gotta say these little Aeros planes with the 50 millimeter EDF have been really good. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that? That the goose? The agree. Take off flaps here. Full landing flaps, look at this. Let's see how slow we can go. Okay, out of the flaps all together. Manned aircraft is out there thousands of feet away, so we're good. I do notice that I'm getting a little bit of up when I give it full throttle. And that's unusual. Okay, the other thing I'm noticing is that I have my, tr I have my gain knob turned halfway down, which tells me, okay, this is my four minute timer coming up. Coming around quick. Man, really, really good. Good behavior on this plane. 
Now, one thing you guys might not be aware of if you're a new pilot, you probably think, what's the big deal about a rudder? Rudder is how you keep your nice crisp knife edges and how you coordinate your turns. Jets don't really, you know, use rudder as much as other aircraft. But the thing is, I use it constantly. And if you ever have any asymmetry, like in those sharklets, you will really want to have a rudder so you can correct it. Did I hear a beep when you came by? Maybe. Okay. I'm not sure if you did. I thought I, thought I did too. It could have just been the chirp of the engine. It's just the way the engine comes mm -hmm. in. Yep, thank you. Let's do some rolls for the people. Boy, this plane is just super well behaved. I must say, I really like it. I love the way Vipers fly. I've flown a few of them. I've been very happy with every Viper I've ever had. And this is no exception. There's our beeping. Yep. Oh wait, was it? There it is. Yes. Now that's a really long flight time. Now camera crew? Yep. I'm not sure if I want to land this in the snow, but I don't think I have a lot of choice. Okay. So let's try. I'll stay here. Full landing flaps and safe. Out of the flaps. That was so uneventful. And yet I hope I didn't damage my servos because with flaps deployed, the flaps do drag the ground. So you can stay there off of okay. the ice and snow. I don't know that the battery's dead even yet. Man, that was so non-eventful. The only thing that dragged was those two things on the back. Yeah. All right, so let's look at this real quick. Cam crew, I'm gonna have you hold this for just a second. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, this is what I need to do. Flap system. See this? I almost feel like I need to go. Did I have minus? Yeah, let's do minus 10. I hear a helicopter, but I can't tell where it is. Oh, and then the other thing is forward programming. Let's go in there and change the one X to 0.5 X. Wow. I know. Okay, one X. Down to point, uh, one X to point five. 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 Ah. Uh, Can you, if you go to point two five, when you bump it, will it go up? Where is the helicopter? I don't know. I hear it, but I oh, can't see it. He's right over the neighbor's house. He's below the tree line. Oh. I'm, I can't zoom. They're a long ways away. See, they're a long ways okay. away. Okay, so anyway, I don't understand why it won't let me go to point five. That's really annoying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to gains. Watch this. We're just gonna reduce them this way. More than one way to skin a cat, guys. There is no yaw correction. I probably don't need to fix that. Okay, now I can put that back to the middle which should get us going with no problems. This plane has been really easy to put together. Stay tuned for the unbox build and radio setup. We're gonna launch it again and see if we get some more flight. Show them, the, show them now. Oh, there he is. Is that a Blackhawk? Yeah, it looks like a, no. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's a medical helicopter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, coming back to the real feature presentation here. Throttle cuts off, takeoff flaps, landing flaps. Now we're gonna add a little bit of up elevator on there. And boy, look at the elevator. Wow, that's how much trim I put in there. That's crazy. That's okay, a throttle. Lot of trim. Throttle cuts off. Full throttle. That was without safe. Really uneventful. Oh wait, I lied. I'm in safe now. I didn't realize it. I apologize, guys. I wasn't trying to lie to you. I'm in safe. See, hands off the sticks. Full landing flaps. Look at that. So good. Look at this. I had to cut off safe so I could make that move. There's a beep. So I think I might have gone 
just, just, just slightly too far on my correction. Man, this is a long flight. Holy cow. Full landing or takeoff flaps, landing flaps. Man, that thing is good. <laughs> it's so cool. Don't forget their flap runs, folks. So you do lose some of your roll authority when you put them on. Okay, full landing flaps here. Okay, a little bit of power out of the flap runs. You hear our beeper? Mm-hmm. It's finally beeping. That means we should probably land. Oh, now it's dead. Okay, I chopped my throttle immediately out of the flaperons. A little bit of juice. We're gonna land it since it's dead, full dead. Okay, out of the flap so it doesn't hurt anything. <laughs> that was so cool. It's really slightly softer yeah. than the driveway. Okay, so just to be clear, I think that voltage alarm might not be working. <laughs> So we have a voltage alarm in our pocket that will work. Lots well, of beeping. You know what's beeping? What? That's not our alarm. That's the plane. What? Yeah. Well, oh wait. It's all beeping. Yeah, it's it's the ESC. The ESC is also beeping. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the XPC battery checker out. We'll pop out this battery definitely spent it that is so cool Ooh, it's kind of getting water in there i don't like that at all Ooh. see that that's just probably from the the snow on the ground mm. the snow is icy on the surface right now so you guys might not have that when you're landing so i doubt it's going to be a problem okay hold that yep i'm going to just grab one of these out here real quick stick that in there we'll see if there's any difference in performance my guess is it's going to be real similar and i'm actually going to I felt like our CG was just literally spot on, guys. Mm -hmm. That felt super good. I had no predisposition to adjust it at all. Um, but this battery is slightly heavier and a little bit bigger, so I gotta push it back just a hair just to physically get it to fit, okay? So we're gonna pop this one in there, just show you how easy that is. And then, uh, I didn't get that very tight though. Are you gonna do the voltage alarm? We on? will. Oh, okay. We're gonna do a voltage alarm, even though it's a smart pack. We don't have any way to get that telemetry data back, okay? So then I'll just flip this over so that it sticks to itself and gets tidied up, right? And then this, we're gonna clear our timer. We flew forever on that. Okay, yeah. so guys, let's see what we got for voltage. I'm kind of excited. And we got enough flight, we're gonna get one more flight for sure. Yeah, it's spent. Yeah. Okay, so it's dead. Okay. So uh, no puffing though, perfect. So that's always great. Okay, so this one here was just charged fresh, so it should be at like 99 or 100 percent. And as you can see, the IC3 goes in just fine. Waiting for the second dance, that means everything is good to go, and you can start stuffing wires and moving the plane around. Before it does that, you may actually induce an error voltage. in setup. Oh, since we listen to voltage alarms, that's right. Right. Good yep. point. Mm -hmm. I know that was really critical. It is really you, critical. That was like maybe probably nine-ish minutes. Yeah, I think it was probably like eight and a half, nine minutes of actual flight time. Yeah. But honestly, that was a great flight. Now on 3S, I feel like it could use just a little bit more juice. And to be honest with you, I feel like this plane kind of needs a rudder because it's a good enough flying plane that it, I want to fly it. Like, I, I don't want to just like halfway fly. I don't want to fly it. Throttle cuts off, takeoff flaps deployed, safe is on. Full throttle. Oh man, there it is. I noticed it's safe, kind of lets it droop down a little bit. So I need to set up in my flight mode a mix for that. Gosh, that looks so good. Oh yes. We are out of safe now, obviously. Oh yeah, I'm loving it guys, it's so good. Well, I mean, call me crazy, but that seems a little zippier to me. Is that just in my head or is it actually? Hmm. That looks faster to me. Yeah. Not by a huge amount, not by big margins, 
but it definitely feels like it's a little faster. Let's totally stall it and then safe. Awesome, guys. Limited bank angle right. See how it's going downhill quite a bit? Okay, a little bit of throttle to get away from the eagle killing zone. Out of safe. Aggressively flipping it over. Let's do some upside down flight performance. Plenty of elevator there. That thing does just fine upside down. Granted, I don't really like flying upside down. I think it's kind of not very cool. I'm sure there's somebody that's gonna be like, oh, but you young whippersnapper, there was this uh, person that did a lot of that and they were a big deal in aviation. Okay, fine, whatever. I believe you. You can totally like flying upside down. That's right. Okay. I just don't like it. I think it looks weird. And it reminds me of the banana hobby reviewer who would just like always fly every plate upside down. Like that was one of the big ticket items. And I just thought that's so lame. And now I do that. <laughs> Guys, this thing is sweet. It cruises too. On 3S, this thing does good. I must say, I kind of do like the Smart Pack better. <laughs> I didn't think it'd be any difference, but I feel like it's a lot more juicy. That's 50% throttle there. Oh, that is so beautiful. How are you feeling about this? Comfort level with the uh, six inch passes. Oh, I'm fine. Just getting used to my camera. Yeah, guys, we apologize. We're trying to figure out some of the uh, nuances of this new camera gear. And when I say camera gear, I mean cell phone, just like yes. the other ones. Mm -hmm. Man, it looks good. And blue skies are not good for filming airplanes, no. in case you guys didn't already know these things. The camera crew makes it look easy, A, which some of you have already come to realize, and B, I just realized it's like the nicest day we've had in weeks. I know. And I spent it talking to a solar, <laughs> a solar guy. What? <laughs> Why do we do that? That was so I told dumb. you your time was off. Oh, you Never did? Never listened to me. I, yeah. Should have put a voltage alarm on you. No, you wouldn't listen to that either. I was just, yeah, I just ignored that for sure. Going out, going out yonder. Oh, that looks so stinking gorgeous. That's 50% throttle there, takeoff flaps going in. We're gonna slow it down, way down. Full aileron, or excuse me, full flap rons. Boy, that thing is draggy. Did I scare you? No, I trust you. I've only ran into you a couple times, right? Mm hmm Full speed pass, you good? Mm-hmm. And full disclosure, it's because I didn't get out of the way. Because I was trying to get the shot. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Oh man, that's what a runner's aiming. Wow. Out of the throttle. Dead stick pass. Love the sound this thing mm -hmm. makes. It's got that scream to it, which is so cool. If you've never experienced an RC scream, you got to. And I'm not talking about Brian Phillips when he's excited. <laughs> Sorry. Man, I'm loving flying this plane. It is so much fun. I'm afraid it's gonna disappear in the sky on camera. What do you think, camera crew? Maybe a little bit. We at least have a little bit of clouds, which helps. Well, on those power lines that people always, oh my goodness, power lines. What, do, what if you hit that power line? Yeah, it's gonna destroy the plane just like every other time. Yep. What do you mean every other time, whippersnapper? I never fly around power lines. Do you hear a ridiculous alarm going off? Thank you, Esteban, what? for keeping my wow. alarm instead of giving it to me. <laughs> when we were flying together, my favorite Latin cameo, Esteban, was out here flying with me. He's been featured on the channel many times. And uh, he decided he was gonna keep my voltage alarm. Viciously. I'm sure he maliciously tried to. He did. Steal $3 from you. He did. I know it was. 
Okay, so I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna fly that direction, then I'm gonna turn around and fly back toward us and see if I can get a good stick on the landing. Okay, out of the flaps, a little bit of throttle. I just let off too much inertia. Full landing flaps here, out of safe this time. And there you go, out of the flaps. That is so cool. Guys, I love this thing. It is a really fun plane. We have yet to be um, dynamed by any Aeros plane. Yes. Not even one. Thank you, Aeros. This plane is no exception. I really like it. Uh, very fun flying. Definitely on the ice. It's cool because it just skips along <laughs> forever, which is really fun. Not so cool that the porpoise hole uh, fills up with ice. That is maybe not so great. But there again, you know, it's snow. You're not always going to have snow. Thank Let's look inside. Snow. Look at that. Hit pack the nose. See that? Yeah. So otherwise, I would say amazing fit. AR630 is a perfect fit inside of this thing. If you get the opportunity to buy this with the Vector, you can use an AR410, which is a non-stabilized receiver. It's a lot cheaper, and it's gonna do every bit as good as this. However, you won't get as much adjustability. So that being said, very happy with this plane. One glaringly missing detail would be the rudder. I'd like to see a rudder on this. And I also kind of do on the BAE Hawk. And I kind of also do on the T-33. Oh, that plane flies so good. But the thing is, it's like, I almost feel like when a manufacturer doesn't put a rudder in a plane, it's like they're admitting that it's not good enough. And I'm like, no, these three planes are awesome. They deserve rudders. Now the BAE Hawk, I didn't feel like it needed it, but I feel like this one kind of does. So that being said, how hard is it to put a three and a half gram servo here, cut this thing and make a rudder. I don't know, as hard as you want it to be, I guess. But the thing is we've set up the radio to do it all. So if you're curious about doing that, all you have to do is just follow the build, the unbox build and radio setup. And uh, these are nitro gloves. They help cut the cold uh, a little bit in extreme cold. They don't work as good as you'd like them to. But on cool days like this, it's enough to keep the edge off, especially when you're handling wet stuff. So if you ask, you know, I can send you links to something like this. But anyway, this plane is great. I love it. It's very good. I've never been disappointed by a Viper. And this 50 millimeter EDF by Eros is not going to be the first one. Also, the NX8 worked really good on this application. Uh, we've been super happy with it. Um, I would say on flaps, you definitely don't need them. They just don't do that much for this plane. So that being said, if you get the vector, that's why I said you can get the vector, you don't need to set up flaperons. I just don't think they really do that much for this plane. So that being said, you could also cut an inboard flap here, add probably one nine gram servo, run them both off of one nine gram servo, and you could have some incredible slow flight performance. Way more incredible than those flaperons will do. Because I've always felt like flaperons where there's a proper inboard flap slot, don't work as good, just because of the shape of the wing. Uh, that being said, spoiler rounds might be fun. You might be able to actually make the plane a little bit faster, which would be cool. You could mix that into your elevator, do all sorts of fun stuff. But in my case, very happy with the plane. Um, camera crew, if you don't mind holding this, I'm gonna adjust the uh, gains just a little bit because I felt like the gains, we probably overshot just a little bit. You can see how this is kicked over a little bit. Mm. We're gonna go back to forward programming and do that before we call it quits. Connecting, main menu. It takes a second to load. J row settings. And then you can go to AS3X setup and then gains. Okay, then you can go down to gains. Wait for it to load. Did I reset those? Mm -hmm. What the heck? Were you in flight mode three when you did that? Um, I suppose that's possible. Safe mode. Yep, I was in safe. Camera crew, you it just amaze me. Every time you come up with one of these ridiculous technical <laughs> answers that I didn't ask you for. Okay, good. We didn't get to the alarm, did we? It was blinking red when you opened it. It was blinking? Yeah. Like blinking? How much was it blinking? Well, I mean, I didn't like ask it. How much? I don't know. You're <laughs> gonna find out, aren't you? 
out of safe. Okay, here we go, guys. You guys love a good dead stick landing. You never know when I'm just gonna pop out some extra details. Full landing flaps. There we go, out of the flaps. Take off flaps and out. That is so cool and fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can't say that that was a huge improvement or de-improvement. It is pretty much dead calm, as you can see from the windsock, but that was super fun. Definitely check the link in the video description. You could buy one for your very own. If you hated that plane, we have tons more. I promise you, spend a couple hours on the videos in our channel and you will literally probably not make it to the end. There's like 1500 plus of them and we will show you everything from uh, enjoying a recreational experience with my grandpa's plane that he built or going through a 50 video long build, in-depth lighting and ridiculous stupid things that will never help you, but you probably will get a kick out of it more than I thought you would. Also, there's lots of me crashing and making mistakes. So you'll love it, I promise. Stay tuned, we'll unbox this uh, build and radio setup at next. And the only thing to keep in mind is that we did make a couple of quick changes on the rates. So we brought whatever the factory default was like 30, 40, 50, or 30, 40, 60, down to like 25, 35, and 50, even though the rudder doesn't exist. So hopefully that helps. If you have questions, leave it in the comments below. Special thanks to the patrons who support us on a monthly basis, that's really nice. And we've got fireworks for you guys. Fireworks just for you. But also, uh, thanks to the PayPal support that just comes in out of the blue and surprises us. It always brightens our day. But mostly, we know you want those things and that's why you're here. So buy one. Don't deny yourself. Stay tuned. YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. We have a box. We're gonna open it right now. We're gonna put it together. You've already seen it fly. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be unlike anything you've ever seen on Brian Phillips RC where we unbox, build, radio setup and then you already saw the flight. It'll be just, wait, hold on, it'll be just like every other <laughs> video you've you seen. You have a new it's plan. an Eros Viper 50 millimeter, are you kidding me? We knew that was what it was gonna be, because it said it on the box. Okay, so we'll just put this box over here, and then we'll let you guys feast your eyes on this. This is not a super new release. It's been out for a little bit, but we started working with Eros recently, and we have been very satisfied with our experience with Eros. Um, they make some good stuff, very fun. We've been really impressed with the Vector Stabilizer, which has auto leveling in it as well. So it's like having Safe and AS 3X. So we'll just lay this out of the way. Okay, so simple manual. Looks like pretty good packaging, just kind of run of the mill on the upper echelon. Looks like we might have some winglets. Yeah, some sharklets here. Beautiful flat profile, a little bit of flex there. I believe there's reinforced, reinforcement in this wing. Got a nice hand launch point here. Looks like some sort of a vent here probably. Y cable for the ailerons. Okay. Nice high contrast from bottom to top. That helps on jets. I love this little plane. Look at this. That's so cool. Oh, it's small. Yeah. Smaller than I thought. 50 millimeter EDF. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be similar to the BAE Hawk in terms of size. I believe that's an 11 blade fan. Got nice crash protection here with ventilation. So that's great. Okay. Canopy comes off. Really easy hatch access. XT60. Looks like elevator and then throttle. Okay, throttle, elevator, ailerons. Oh, there's no rudder. Okay, so it's bank and yank. So it is just like the BAE Hawk. So technically, uh, you should be able to do this with split elevator here. You should be able to do this with the provided vector if there is a vector. I can't tell if there's a vector in this thing. Sure doesn't look like it if there is. So if there's not a vector, then you'll want to use an AR630 probably, which is gonna give you stabilization in AS3X. So, these things need to get glued on. And as per our simple instructions, our, our typical build, we're gonna glue this together. 
I have a little teeny bit of foam to foam left. It's about gone. Foam to foam has been a good product. We've been really happy with it. It's like mucilage, but this stuff is a bigger tube. It's just less expensive, but we've had some consistency issues with it. Looks like the wing bolts on. It looks like this possibly glues in as well. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, that glues in. So it's a friction fit right now. We're gonna basically work on the winglets first. The instruction manual will tell you how to do it, but we're just gonna tell you how to do it because it's so simple. Okay, see how hard this stuff comes out? It's nice because it's thick, but you actually blow out the bottom seam if you're not careful, okay? So we're just gonna get that on there. And it's kind of like a boogery compound, which is, uh, which is good. We'll leave that there. I'm actually gonna glue all the surfaces that contact one another, just like this. See how it's already stringy? It's the double-edged sword of mucilage. It comes out of the tube pretty firm, but then that means it takes less time to set up. So you do wanna let this stuff cook off a little bit, meaning chemically react and mix with the ambient air, and then that'll help set the glue. And then this stuff turns into a tacky compound and you'll be amazed. You can pretty much hold the plane up from this sharklet when it's done setting. And uh, we'll demonstrate. Okay, so just right there too. So every surface where you expect it's gonna touch, you wanna cover it up. But I usually go over both sides and I go over the fuselage first, first because it's always kind of hard to tell if there's gonna be like a break for the aileron here. And then a lot of times I will take a Q-tip and I will spread this around as well just to make sure that I get good contact and it actually gets stuck to the part of the aircraft. And we're gonna let that cook off for just a minute. Okay, so we'll just do that there. Stick that right there. Roll that on. And then this will be almost like a postage envelope. I mean, I know you guys probably don't know what those things are, some of you, because you're too <laughs> young. But if you lick them, and then you close them, that's kind of what it's gonna feel like in terms of the stickiness. It's just really intense. It's almost like a dry glue, it's weird. And it's like a rubber cement for those of you that are my age. And uh, for those of you that don't remember using rubber cement as a kid, I do. About elementary age, you could glue stuff together. Okay, so now if this was foam to foam, it'd be a lot more runny. Okay, so we'll just let, that's cooked off plenty. Okay, so we'll just stick that on there. And see, we have kind of a bad cut here, so there's a gap. If I would have noticed that, I would have fixed it. So check yours first. Okay, and then we're just pushing this in. See how it's pooping out a little bit? That's not a problem, we'll just leave that. And take this. Just kind of, see how, see how sticky it is? That's, that, it's on there. I mean, I, I wouldn't want it to stay there but it's so intense that it's almost, like when I stick this together, watch this, look. It's been together for, what, three seconds? Probably not even. Look, it's on there. That's why I'm saying this stuff is incredibly strong. Um, and it's cheap, so I mean, it's one of those things where even if you get four tubes and you have to work to get it out, it still does work. So the wing is done, that's pretty cool. We'll set that aside, let that kind of relax. And then uh, I'm just kind of looking at this canopy. It feels like it's solid, which seems like a lot of wasted weight. So depending on if we have CG issues or not, we should be able to eliminate some of that if we want to lighten up the plane. I don't think we're going to need to though. So if you put it on here and you slide this in, you're gonna make a big mess everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue right here. I'm going to squeeze this on all the way along. I don't know if you guys can see, camera crew, can you see? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I'm holding the back of the tube. As this stuff gets older, you see how hard it is to get it out of there? And you'll note that it's like this yellowish gross color. Looks like um, snot from a dinosaur. That's actually what this stuff is, is dinosaur snot. <laughs> a lot of personal experience with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all sorts of dinosaur snot. Okay. So now that I've got that off of there, if you get this brand new, they have the tip already cut. 
which really irks me because what, let me cut the tip, you yeah. morons. So anyway, I'm not sure why they do that. Probably they don't have an ultrasonic welder to close the tip, but they have an ultrasonic welder to close the bottom. This stuff comes in an aluminized tube, so it comes out and then when you squeeze it, sometimes it over squeezes, which is annoying. So there's pros and cons to both. Okay, so you see how we got a big glob on either side? Now I'm gonna take that glob, same Q-tip, and I'm just gonna spread it out. I mean, this stuff seems pretty counterintuitive, but then when you get your own plane, you're gonna wanna make sure you get good contact. Okay, now there is mold release on this too, by the way, <clears throat> and that mold release is slick. So that's part of the reason why you wanna make sure that you actually cover the surface. Okay, and doing this stuff, it's not hard. It just takes an extra couple of seconds and it's really not that hard. Um, but I know the way it's gonna be, especially if this is your you know, second or third plane, you're gonna be so excited that you're gonna wanna cut corners. Just try not to as much as you can, as much as you can tolerate, because it will, it will help you have a better level of success. See how I had a little bit of overshoot? I just roll it off. And you see, all I'm doing is I'm just wiping that on the top lid here. Okay, so that there's contact on top and bottom. And that stuff is so sticky, it's like almost hard to move. And by the way, if you get this stuff in a place you don't want it, what you can use is Kicker or CA Accelerant and it will break down that glue. Okay, so you'll note I didn't put any on this side. That is a big no-no for contact cement because it's supposed to contact, but here's the catch. We're not gonna be able to let this set or you'll never slide that thing in. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to put it on and then go, like immediately. Okay, so if this was brand new, it'd be about, the viscosity would be maybe, I would say a fifth of what we're dealing with. And I'm doing barely any, okay? Just enough to get a little teeny bit of coverage, okay? Just a little teeny bit here. And it's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. But the more perfection you can get in this step, the better you're gonna have an experience. And I can tell you this, I've had a lot of failures on my planes over the years. I've never had a surface come off like this. I've had control surfaces break, but that's usually as a result of a crash because I like flew too long or some stupid other problem that I caused, okay? So normally you would let that sit if this was fresh, but ours is old, so we're not. We're just gonna slip it right in. I'm just gonna push, let it seat in there. Push it in tight. Got a little bit on my fingers. This stuff is nice because you can ball it up into a little booger and you can flick it in the garbage can or at your friend. Okay, so that's done. Check for squareness. Look down the length of the plane or look down the length of the plane. Make sure everything is where you want it to be because it's not gonna move after that. And then after this glue has a few minutes to set up, you'll see these little poop outs, okay? So we're gonna take and clean that up real quick with a fresh Q-tip. Is that the technical term for them? A fresh Q-tip? <laughs> no, poop outs. Oh, poop outs, yeah, these are poop outs. Okay, so I'm gonna roll, just like you would roll a booger. It's literally the exact same way, except just imagine a 100-year-old dinosaur <laughs> booger excrement. Okay, 100 year old, geez, that's a pretty young, <laughs> pretty you? young dinosaur. So the only reason I care about that here is because you can see it from the top, okay? And you see, as I spin it, it makes this like weird web on here. So it doesn't, it doesn't come off on anything, but it makes it really easy to roll any access that you do find. Okay, so you just kind of give it a quick once over. And then usually what I'll do is I'll go back to the first component and just make sure we don't have any separation. And we, we don't here, but we do have a little poop out, okay? See, there's a little bit on the edge. So just gonna roll a counter to it. See how it's pulling onto the Q-tip? See that? Just pull it up into the Q-tip, up into the Q-tip, up into the Q-tip. Then once it's up into the Q-tip, then you're done, okay? Check the other side. And I mean, it's just, you know, a couple seconds on each wing. It's not that big a deal. Just make sure you don't have this separating. And what will happen is you'll note that there's some level of separation that occur, can occur. When this is fresher, it will kind of like seep up and away from its connection point, okay? We didn't experience that here, so we're lucky. Um, okay, so I didn't see a bolt or nut sack here, did you? 
we like missed those it. Little pockets. We missed it. Maybe where is where it? The little, where the little winglets were or something? There it is, guys. Oh, it is. Look at that. You have to really look on some of these models. And boy, I love it when there's only four screws in a nutsack. That is wonderful. My favorite. Yes. Because that means we only have to put four screws in. That is so nice. Guys, it didn't used to be that way. In case you were wondering, if you're new to the hobby, it used to be a lot more parts. Or if you're still building dynams. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so we're just gonna drop this through. Oh, super nice, the Y cable will be accessible from this side. So we'll definitely be able to do, depending on which receiver we do, we should be able to do flaperons, no problem. Okay, now the reason we're gonna use an AR630 or 631 is so that we have a stabilizer. But I'm surprised, I thought this one would have a vector. So I'm a little bit bummed about that. I thought it had the vector. I guess it doesn't, or at least we don't have it. Oh look, a plane stand. You see that? That's oh, weird. How handy. I wasn't expecting that to be just sitting there. Like we had just built a plane recently. Oh geez. It might be a little bit too small though. We just gotta put these four screws in. So yeah. I guess the plane stand is a no-go. So this is the other trick we used to use a lot is we use the back of our couch because there's that point between the two chairs. Okay, so these screws are Phillips. So we need four and it looks like they sent us one extra maybe. How yeah, they sent one extra. Typical. Okay, so we'll put this bag over here. And then we need to get a Phillips. This would be like a micro sort of size. And if you guys are used to dealing with this nature, you're gonna have about 400 of these little Chinese screwdrivers, okay? If not, it's just a precision screwdriver. The thing, you get these extra bonuses sometimes in these Chinese things, you'll get some hairs. That might've been my hair, but I kind of doubt it. That was so easy, oh my goodness. Look at that, okay. Okay, so there's this, and I'm just looking at this seam and watching for that to flatten if you wanna show the people. See how it's flat? Then I trust that that's good. So the assembly on this plane is, is second to none, very, very simple. To be honest with you, we built a, a handful of different Vipers and this went together super simple. But there again, this doesn't have flaps and it doesn't have a rudder. It also doesn't have retracts. So when you compare this against the E-Flight uh, 70 millimeter Viper, you know, it is an inferior plane in that regard, but it might be superior in the regard that, or in the idea that you can get this in the air for a lot less money. So it just kind of depends on your personal preference. I believe this is gonna fly on three or technically four S, but they're gonna tell you three S. What do they say on the box? Let's look. Mm. The box is gonna say, looks like 700 and, oh, so 773.5 millimeters. So 775 millimeters. Uh, looks like almost 700 millimeters long, 470 grams. Oh, dang, it's close, you know? Uh, so there's your motor size is 26 by 27 millimeters, uh, 4,500 KV. And uh, that's not kilovolts, that's uh, thousands of rotations per volt. So 4,500 rotations per volt applied. So if you apply 10 volts DC, then you would get 45,000, right? Yeah. Well, we don't do math on camera. So 30 amp ESC, nine gram servos, there's three of them. And then this is a four channel receiver is what's needed, center of gravity, uh, 50 millimeter, 11 fan. Looks like 11.1 volt, 1300. So that's a 3S, 1300. Our experience with these Aeros planes is they will take 4S and they will be even more insanely good because they are very good. We've had very good luck. However, I am bummed to see that this one doesn't have the vector in it. So we'll pause and come right back. All right, so we have everything cleaned up and we're basically just getting ready to start the radio setup. So as per typical, we're gonna mark the CG on this plane. Since you have no landing gear, no undercarriage, you're gonna check the CG upside down. So I mark the top of the wing. In this case, I have a black marker and then in the manual, on this page here, it says 60 to 70 millimeters back from where? From the leading edge of the wing, okay? So now, the leading edge of the wing is a bit ambiguous on this and many planes because of this rounded nature here. So usually what I do is I just kinda 
I, I try to take it from the most obvious starting point and then go back, okay? It's not perfect, it doesn't always work perfect, but look where the line is. It's hard to tell. So we've got our calipers turned on. We'll put it to 60 approximately and then dial it in so that it's exactly where we want. Okay. And then basically all I have to do is just, I'm just gonna make sure I use from the edge of the actual wing, okay? Okay, there's 60. I'm gonna flip this upside down from the edge of where the wing goes out. You see that, that edge? That's what I'm treating. Okay, now 70. So 70 is the back point. You can also measure from this point. That'll give you the same measurement. Okay, so right there. And you see I'm kind of pressing it into the foam so it makes a little bump. Now you could use a different color or you could use a different technique for marking your CG. We've had really good luck doing this. It's very simple, it's very quick, and it's effective. Now, if you're doing a non-foam plane, it's a little bit harder to do this because you can't make that bump. I like being able to feel that recess. And then like, if your marker gets a little bit out of hand, you can take a little alco alcohol, isopropyl alcohol and wipe that off. And then you can still feel the bump, okay? So obviously this isn't gonna work because we have battery in here. So let's talk about battery real quick. This is a recommended battery from the guys at uh, Hobby Zone. Uh, we also have 1300 3S Smart Pack. This happens to be Gen 1 because we have the balance lead. You can also get that from uh, hobbyzone.com. Okay, so we'll just pop this open. This one has the XT60. This one has the IC3 with the Smart Lead, okay? So the Smart Lead will plug into an XT60 on a plane, okay? So you have a balance lead and you have the discharge lead. If you're not familiar with batteries, the way this works is that this is a 1300 milliamp per cell and there's three cells in series. So this is called a 3S for series, not 3C for cells. It's three cells in series because at times the batteries are made in parallel. So it'd be a 3P. 3P instead of 3S, okay? Now, back in the day when we used a lot of NICAD packs, they would build up the voltage by stacking those in series, and then sometimes there'd be two of those series in parallel. So it just depends on the battery. Nowadays, we're pretty much in 4.2 volt chunks. That's 4.2 volts is a charged, and then discharge is around, you know, about, let's just call it three volts for easy figuring. You can go lower and still be safe, but 3.8 is where you're supposed to discharge them to. So 4.2 to three, and then it drops like a rock. 4.2, three, <laughs> then it drops to nothing, okay? So let's just take a look at how these fit in here real quick. Obviously we don't have the receiver in there yet. Uh, we will get to that shortly, but the receivers are so light, it doesn't really make a big factor for us. Uh, it comes with a little Velcro. We've been using shelf liner on the Velcro, which works really nice to hold those batteries without then having to actually apply this to the battery. Okay, so we'll just put this in here. Obviously this will made up with that and power it up or this just to prove that it will work. This goes in here. These newer generation XT60s are a little bit harder to plug in, but as you can see, you can get it in there. Okay, the pin size and socket size are correct. It's just that the connector itself is a little bit different shape. These go in very easy, okay? Now, we don't have a receiver in there, so obviously we're not gonna fly it like this, but I just wanna check the CG quick. Comes with a mid-grade. It's actually a pretty solid strap. The strap is free, that's a very good thing. If they're not free, you might as well leave them out because they're just a problem. Okay. So usually on jets, it's a pain to put batteries in. But on this one, it's pretty easy because you got lots of extra slack and this has extra. So you can flip it upside down and stick it back to itself. There's gonna be a receiver somewhere in here at some point shortly. So I'm just tucking this down in here, drop that in. We're gonna get super picky because we don't have a receiver. I'm lined up center of gravity on the back hole. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So when we put in, 
Okay, so it's tail heavy right now. When we put in the receiver, it's gonna go in front of where the center of gravity mark is. So we should probably get it about perfect. So that is uh, impeccable fit. Do you have, and you have a little bit of wiggle room if you need it. I got this much easily to do. Wow. So if I wanted to make it, if you are new to flying and you wanna make a plane fly more stable, put your battery forward further so that your plane is more nose heavy. If you're a more experienced pilot and you want more elevator authority, then make it more tail heavy, but tail heavy planes fly once, nose heavy planes have very little elevator, okay? So that's how you can distinguish that. Some people fly with a tail heavy, intentionally tail heavy configuration, but not so tail heavy that it doesn't fly, so that they have more aer aerobatic capability for like 3D flying and stuff, okay? I'm gonna push this even further forward. See where it's bumping? Now it's bumping. I just wanna see how it feels now. It's actually pretty nice. It's like if you're gonna fly this with an AR6, 10 or excuse me 620 which is no stabilizer but just a receiver you wouldn't do that you would use a 410 a 410 would give you the same thing you don't need six channels because even if you did have the 410 you could run throttle ailerons elevator rudder okay or throttle elevator ailerons vector on off which is your stabilizer if you get the vector. This doesn't have the vector right now. I don't know if they're gonna offer it at some point in the future, but either way, it's not in there. So, or elevator, elevator, excuse me, throttle, elevator, um, aileron one, aileron two for flapperons. So that'd be pretty cool. So you do flapperons in there, or spoilerons. Flapperons are when the ailerons act as ailerons, so opposite to create a roll, or together, to create a flap or up to create a spoiler. Spoilerons go up, flapperons go down. But if you want stabilization and flapperons, then you would have to go up to a six channel, right? Only because the AR630 supports AS3X. There isn't currently a four channel receiver that supports AS3X, which I don't understand why. I know, that's... It really should be an option because yeah. there's a lot of sailplanes that don't need a lot right. of extra channels. So anyway, the other thing about this uh, Venom pack that we've always appreciated is that they do come with adapters for Dean's, XT60, and then to EC3 from XT60 or IC3, okay? EC3, one of my least favorite connectors in the RC industry, which stands for E-Flight Connector, which is funny because I love the IC3 in their exact same shape. Yeah. But they just aren't problematic. We plug them in, they work perfect. Okay, so that's really cool. So we've got all that done. And uh, in fact, we can probably, we'll go ahead and whip this thing out and show you how to charge it. Uh, because if you're new to flying, this is probably not a first plane to be honest, uh, but honestly, if you had the right experience with the simulator for a few months, you could probably fly this as your first plane if you wanted. So let's talk about how to charge this. Oh, well, this is when it's nice to have this little adapter. Right. So the adapter that comes with it. True. Now this is not a smart battery, so it's not gonna auto discharge or anything. So when you're done flying, if you charge it uh, to 4.2 and then you let it discharge, so we're gonna turn this charger on. We're gonna flip down to this. This is the S2200, plug this in here. Go to the balance plug. You can see it's at 3.8 approximately. Press and hold play. Set the current level to what charging state you want. This is a, I'm just gonna charge it at 1C, which would be 1300 milliamps or 1.3 amps. That's the wrong way. The arrows are counterintuitive as heck on these things. Horizon, if you're listening, switch them. The arrows are backward from what they should be. It drives me nuts every time. There you go, 40%, it's gonna start charging, and as you can see, it's working. So with that, guys, we're at the point now where we're gonna jump into radio setup, so we'll go ahead and get the radio, and we'll come right back. All right, YouTube, so we've got to put the radio in this Viper, 50 millimeter, so we're gonna pop off the top, and we note right away that there is a piece of Velcro here, which we talked about real briefly, and just full disclosure, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a piece of Velcro to actually hold a piece of shelf liner in place so that we don't have to put Velcro on our battery. 
So this is the Fly Venom 30C 3S pack. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be using, 30C pack, and then if we run out of that battery and we wanna keep flying, we got some smart packs that we're gonna use. We'll link to all that stuff in the video description below. And basically what we're gonna do here on this plane is we are going to <clears throat> start by trying to retrieve the piece of Velcro that I accidentally put in my Velcro bag here. This is what I do with Velcro that comes in the planes. Basically the idea is if you take a battery and you stick it in here, um, they want you to put Velcro on the battery and I just, I hate to have Velcro on all my batteries because then it makes them not fit in certain applications. And so what I found that works really sharp is if you can take the Velcro that's, you know, generally just provided with the plane, okay? They'll just provide it with the plane. In this case, I accidentally pulled it out of there and lost it somewhere. Then you can take your battery, instead of sticking it on the battery, you stick it on shelf liner. And then the shelf liner is gonna give you a good bite on your battery. And so I found out the easiest way in our experience is to do this. And you can, you can make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I kind of tend to make it, try to make it about the same size. But this Velcro happens to be a little bigger than our Velcro here. And so that's okay, because that'll hold a little bit larger swath. And with these jets, it seems like you can never really just put the battery right in the middle. It never seems to work. And I don't know why that is. So if you're listening, manufacturers, put the strap in the right spot so we don't have to worry about this. But in our case, I just take and peel that off. Very simple. And then stick this down. Okay. Now, full disclosure, a little bit of the sticky will generally make it through onto your battery. But then just to show you this, see how it slides really, really easy. Now watch this. That, that won't slip. You can, I could probably hold it like this. See, it's stuck on there. So until you go steep enough <clears throat> and it takes just a few seconds. So it's really easy to do. And I've been learning that if you trim the edges, like at an angle like this, then you get a lot of that sticky residue from getting onto the battery, which is what I want to avoid. Okay. And then this stuff just gets discarded. But anyway, so that sticks down here and that'll give us a place to put the battery. And then we obviously have wiring and everything here that needs to get plugged in. So we're gonna do that next. So we have the receiver of choice on this. I recommended the AR630. The AR631 has an external antenna and it has top pins. The AR630 has end pins and an internal antenna. So I like the internal antenna for a small application especially, but you get the full power, the same exact innards as the Air 631, with the exception of course the internal antenna. So it's very good, you can do all the AS3X and safe that you want, and it is better than Vector, but it's also more expensive. So if you have an opportunity to get a plane with Vector, get it with Vector and then buy the 6, the 620 is considerably cheaper because you don't have AS3X and safe in it, okay? That would be my take. And, and then if you have a banking yank plane like this, the thing that's so cool about doing an AR630 is that you can set this up for flapperons. But if you have a 620 and you have the vector, then you can't mix in the flapperons because then you'll lose the stabilization on at least one of the channels. You can still do flapperons or spoilerons that act still as ailerons or flapperons that act still as ailerons and flaps, but you'll lose the stabilization on one or the other channel. With the 630, you won't lose it on either. So we're gonna set up flapperons on this plane, even though it's probably not necessary. All right, so we have this, which is the throttle channel. So of course we know what throttle is. You can see there's a minus sign on there. So it's the second set of pins back. So that'll get power to the receiver. And then we have this, which is the elevator. It's very easy playing because there's only like three servos on it or well, not even three servos. One, two, three. Yeah, but just a couple of channels. So this is elevator. So I don't remember where it's gonna be, but I'll just plug it into two for now. And then obviously this one would go to your ailerons if you're using the Y cable, but we're gonna separate out the channels, okay? And we'll actually just wait to do that, but we've got a free Y cable for another application now if we need that. 
So we are gonna ultimately have to install this receiver and get that to stick down. And we don't talk often about different methods that can be used to stick these things down. I always think it might work nice to use some Velcro today. We don't often do Velcro, just usually I hot glue them in there, but I was thinking it might be a good idea to do Velcro once just to show you how I've done it in the past and it's worked well. So what I'll do is I'll take Velcro, just the male and female side or whatever you wanna call that, the hook and the loop, and I'll just kind of measure this out and cut it. And the thing that's nice about Velcro, my grandpa always did Velcro. He's passed away now. He used to kind of share this experience together, which is really cool. But uh, he's since passed away. So if you take this, just think about what direction you want that Velcro to stick, okay? I'd prefer to have the soft side down here, in my opinion. But it looks like they put the sticky side down or the prickly side. So I guess I'll just mimic that, okay? Now that's gonna allow this to have a little teeny bit of slop on it. I mean, just like a small, small, small amount, but that's actually not a terrible thing on a stabilized receiver, okay? And since I don't know where the battery's gonna fit, we're just gonna treat this um, temporarily without actually pulling the backing off of the other half of the Velcro equation, okay? Sometimes these things are in really the wrong spot, just depends on the plane. So I'm thinking it either has to go this way this way, this way, this way, this way, but it can't go this way, right? So it has to be pointed forward or pointed backward. And we'll go through how to configure that later. It's very easy. But I'm thinking there's a nice little opening right here. And that would be a perfect place to hide this with the exception of the fact that I might not have quite enough width. And as you can see, I'm not quite able to fit in there. So let's see if it'll fit up here. I will fit, but then it's gonna hit. So that's not okay. It's gonna hit this as it moves. And that tapers back as you go back. So that's not gonna work well. And let's see if it'll go here. If we went here, that'd be okay if the battery doesn't need to move way back to get CG proper. And then you could go way up here, but I don't think that's gonna work either. So I think really we're gonna be kind of married to one possible solution. And I'd like to put it right here if I can get the thing to fit. Okay, so let's just see, let's just see how terrible it works if I just ram it in there. Hmm, interestingly enough. But you see when I ram it in, it sits at about this angle, okay? So when the plane's flying and you turn it on safe, it's gonna wanna correct. So you have, you have to actually calculate that in. And we'll show you how to do that if you ever do it. See how this is just at a little bit of an angle? It's not flat, it's at an angle. So it goes, instead of being flat with the length of the plane, it's like this, right there. So that plane will have to be corrected in our menus. We will show you how to do that. Both for AS3X and safe reasons. Okay, so we'll just slip those over to the side. I'm just making sure I'm not pinching my wires. Gosh, we could almost just stick it in there and not even use the adhesive. Or, you know what? What if I did this? Ooh, yeah, that's a really good spot right there. I like that better. It's gonna be hard to get to the bind button, as you can see. The bind button is way back in there now. So I'll have to use a utility item like a screwdriver or a pair of scissors or whatever to get back there. The other thing you could do is since this doesn't have very much purchase down, you could actually put it this way or this way. And we can put it on the side here kind of like that if I have enough room for the battery. I just don't like getting hamstringed to a certain particular spot for the battery. All right, so now let's continue onward. We'll just lay this out of the way. First thing you gotta do is turn on your transmitter. <laughs> Add new model, create. It's thinking, always takes a second. Okay. Scroll down to model name and it says 77. And then of course, and you can change these values too. I use a legacy keyboard, full disclosure. I don't like the current one, but you can switch it back in system setup. Okay, so this is gonna be the Arrows Viper. So we'll scroll it in and come right back. A Viper 50 millimeter aircraft type. This is where we're gonna set up flap arounds. And you're like, but Brian, how do you do the AS3X? We'll get there. Normal tail, 
except there's no rudder, so we just don't worry. And then we'll change the image to something a little bit more suitable. <coughs> hmm, that looks pretty good. The Hobu. F mode setup. We do have to make an assignment for flight mode. I'm gonna set my uh, flaps up here. And since there's no retracts, I'll probably go ahead and use this. So it'll be like AS3X on, safe on, okay? Switch A, okay, so it's only two modes. Let's see, okay, we'll go back. Spoken flight mode, this is where you can switch between them. So this one's gonna be AS3X. This is just totally a title. So we'll type in AS3X. And so you can make this say whatever you want, okay? And then we'll scroll all the way down to about here, about here, and it'll, we'll come right back. Okay, so there's stabilized mode, and then AS3X, there's safe mode. Here's the AS3X mode. AS3X mode. Okay, and then we'll set this to safe. See how you double click that cancel and it clears the rest. And then we'll scroll way back down again. Safe mode. Safe mode. Okay. Then the channel assign. I'm trying to think about this for a minute. Since I've set up flap rounds. I want to have switch B attached to that, so I want to change this away from it. So I'll just uh, I'll just change that to inhibit. Okay. Okay. Then when we come out of the menu, we'll go to Dual Rates and Expo and start there since it's in order. Switch will be set to switch F. On ailerons, I want five, then ten, then twenty, and then we'll drop the rates back on the highest setting. So this is gonna be the lowest, least responsive setting. This will be the middle responsive and then the most responsive. We'll start in the middle. If we need more, we've got more. If we need less, we've got less. Then when we land, we'll set that to the new middle. So if we went to here, then the middle would become 20 and 90, and then the top would become 40 and 70 or something like that, okay? So that's what we're gonna do on all three control axes. We assign them to switch F. Set the expo to something like five. This is a taste and preference thing, so guys, don't tell me I'm wrong. You could do it totally different and you're not wrong, okay? It's just a preference issue. Okay, now, you're thinking to yourself, there isn't a rudder, Brian. Well, there technically will be, because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a rudder mixed in and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute, because I like being able to use this stick while hand launching. Okay, so we've got that done. Then we'll do throttle cut. Switch H. Not working. Now it is working, that's what we want. See on the bottom left, it's going up and down. When I turn the throttle cut on, it locks it to the low position, as though my stick were not moving. Start using that, guys. I had a guy send me some pictures of chopping up his own arm just today. Don't chop up your own arm. Please be careful, people. Props and lipos. Those are the two things that get people hurt in this hobby. Not running into your own head, although I'm sure that's happened. And I'm sure people probably had a headache, but most people don't get hurt that bad. Props and lipos. Be careful with them. Flap system. We'll set that to switch B. Oh, by the way, another thing too we can learn from Jim, Big Jim, who's the guy who chopped his arm up. He goes right down to the bone. He got hit in the bone with the prop and it broke inside of him. So. Anyway, if you're doing a plane and it's not exactly the same as what you see, err on the safe side, take the prop off. Don't just do it because you see us do it. Do it what's safe, okay? So be safe, guys, don't get hurt. Most people don't get hurt in this hobby, unless you're trying hard or you have a lot of exposure. He'd been doing it for many, many years. All right, so as the camera crew works her way around for the angle that we were at, okay, better. Now, because we don't know what direction things are gonna go, we're gonna be really sparing with this. That's our elevator correction, okay? 
We're gonna make the speed two seconds. And we're gonna go minus, uh, minus 50 is that, uh, well. We'll do like minus 50 and then plus 50. And then we'll adjust that down. Cause the worst thing you could do is set it all the way to 100 and overdrive a servo and damage something. Okay. Okay. See that? So the flaps, which are also known as the ailerons, are moving in opposite directions. And then the elevator is moving just a little bit. Okay. So we've got that set. It's probably going in the wrong direction. That's all right. No big deal. Then mixing. Rudder to aileron. Rudder to aileron. We're going to turn it on. And then we're gonna go rudder to aileron. 100%. You're like, why would you do that? That seems like a really dumb maneuver. It's because when you're hand launching a plane and you're right-handed, your hand's off the stick if you're mode two, which we are. So this gives you ailerons and rudder. Now, if you wanna free up the rudder channel to do something else with it, Come down here and make a normal and go rudder to rudder. And then watch this, rate minus 100 both directions. Okay, the reason I show you this is because you can do this on a four channel receiver with a vector then. It's a lot cheaper for you then. Okay, now watch the rudder. Rudder doesn't move. Doesn't move. Just to prove it to you. Inhibit, now it moves. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back on. Now it stops moving, see? So then look, ailerons move, ailerons move. Ailerons move in the same direction, okay? So, now that we're done with that, um, we know where everything should be plugged in. Timer's cleared. Let's do a timer. Did it say a timer? Mm -mm. Let's do four minutes with a one out. And we'll set one minute to nothing. 20 seconds to nothing. 10 seconds to voice. And then expiration to tone and vibrate with the tone every minute thereafter. Throttle cuts on, middle. Okay, so we can click one over. See how I did that? Just go one over to the right. And you can see where all the channels plug in now. So now you can say, okay, is this the right or the left? I have no clue. Is this the right or the left? I have no clue, but I believe it's probably this one, which would be the left wing, okay? I don't know that, we're just guessing, because it kind of goes into the same spot. And then right aileron, and this is the left. So that would go into channel number one, two, three, four, five, six. So channel six. Okay. Then this one, I presume it's the right one, but I don't know for certain. So brown goes down. That's the second. That's where I plugged in my elevator, actually. So that's in the second port. Then the elevator needs to go to the third. Okay. How do I know what they are? Just look in the screen, we'll tell you, okay? All right, so now the next thing we have to do is we need to go ahead and get this thing physically installed in the plane, which is where we have to do a little bit of guesswork because the difference in weight between these two batteries is pretty minimal. And the difference between these two batteries is pretty minimal. Let's just assume they're all gonna be the same. 1300 3S should be pretty uh, considerably similar, similar if they're all 30 C packs. These are 30 C packs, all of them. So I'm gonna go like this, drop it down in there. I'm gonna slide the Velcro through. We'll just put it in right in the middle and it's probably not gonna be in the right spot. In my experience, it's almost never the right spot. Then I can flip this over, flatten it out. And then I'm not even gonna put this in yet. I'm just gonna leave it loose. And I'm just gonna kind of see where things would land if they were plugged in. So we'll kind of closely emulate what we need. Stick this lid on, flip the plane upside down. Place our middle finger on the back hole. Pretty good. Front hole, tail heavy. It's pretty miraculous. Okay, so then we can actually pull this forward just a hair. 
If you're not using a stabilizer, err on the side of nose heavy. I promise you, you will want it that way. Now, these planes from Arrows tend to do okay on 4Fs. I'm not telling you you should do it. I'm saying that I've done it and it's worked fine. So, I don't wanna push the limit on this just quite yet. We'll get it tested with 3S. We'll see how it does, but you remember how I was all concerned about where that receiver went. The reason I'm all concerned about it, and we can take this Velcro up with that and move that forward. The shelf liner will help us to hold, even though we're getting further and further away from the center. Okay, now on the back hole, we're favoring toward slightly nose heavy. On the front hole, we're still favoring toward tail heavy. So somewhere in the middle, we balance out, which is exactly what we want. So you guys can see what I did there. The battery is pretty much right at the edge of the strap and then all the way forward. Okay. I like that position, that's a good position. Okay, so now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and get the receiver stuck down and then we can finish the rest of the setup, which is pretty easy through forward programming. But I wanna make sure to keep as much flexibility for future changes and improvements and modifications, all that jazz. You could probably, you might be able to get away with here, but I doubt your canopy's gonna go, you'd have to carve it. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'll try to kind of tuck this down here, see if I can get it. See if I can get it right there. Is that gonna compromise my ability to put a 2200 4S in there? I doubt it. Let's try. You wanna pause and grab one? Okay. Okay, so this is a 2200 4S. So obviously the 2200 4S is gonna be heavier, so you're gonna need to push that back. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the gap here, okay? So that's the other big advantage of going with Velcro here. Because if you have the Velcro in the wrong spot, you can just pull it out fairly easy. I think we're gonna commit to that spot. And we also have plenty of room for all the wires to kind of get out of their way and go where they need to go, okay? So I'm gonna pull this Velcro off the backing. Now that we've kind of more or less getting ready to commit to that. And we're gonna be fully committed here in a second. I'm just looking at a ledger line that's right in the middle of that foam mold, okay? So if you get this incorrect, you can actually lift this off of the Velcro and move it slightly. Again, not a huge fan of Velcro for this application, but I have done it a number of times and it usually works pretty good. The other thing is you see this wire that comes from the ESC? Be nice to see that not be right there, but it is right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a small channel. I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife. X-Acto knives are your friend. Use them when they're very sharp and when they get dull, replace the blades. That'll keep you from ending up like big, big Jim with cut up hands in the hospital, okay? By the way, as usual, thanks so much for sending me pictures of your chopped up apparatus. Always makes my day when I see somebody, somebody's organs hanging out of their body. There were no organs involved. Just kidding, guys. So this here, I'm gonna take just to open that a little teeny bit. And then all I'm doing there is just giving a place for this ESC lead to hide, okay? I think a flat bladed screwdriver might work better for that part. Okay, so I got the flat bladed screwdriver this time, so I'll just ride down. And I just wanna control it in this one little area. I don't really care about the rest of it. See how I have it in there now? Just basically make a channel, stuff the wire in, let it, let it go in and relax. Don't cut the cable, just push it in. Okay. So now, that'll be out of the way of the moving part, okay? See that? And if you want, you can glue it or whatever. It's just up to you guys. I'm not super concerned about it. I think it's gonna be fine, but I could be wrong too. All right, so getting back to the setup part, because this isn't a smart ESC with feedback, we're gonna have a voltage alarm in here somewhere. So why don't we go ahead and pull off this Velcro? We already know where we want the pack. Camera crew, while I'm getting this Velcro resituated, why don't you grab that black marker and we'll go ahead and mark this. Cause then that'll give us a reference point for next time too. We always mark our airplanes so that we know where we installed the battery because it's, it's hard to remember where the batteries were. Okay. So if we take this, then I'll mark, you know, like there's a line here and a line here and I'll say 1300. 3S, and I do an arrow to indicate what direction I had my wires going. 
So it's super easy. Okay. I think I take this, slip this down. I'm gonna pull it tight. Cause like basically we're gonna go fly this here in a minute. Um, if all goes to plan and the sun doesn't set. Okay, and I move my shelf liner forward just a hair. So I still have plenty of good purchase on the actual Velcro below. You see, I've only got a little bit of purchase there, but it's not going anywhere. Okay, it's just lifted up for some reason. I don't really understand that, but I don't really care either because it's working. And the canopy's gonna canopy's gonna help hold it too a little bit. But also, this can't it can only go so far forward, so I'm not super worried about it. Okay, now. Why are we getting this so ready? Like you're not, you don't even have it programmed. I agree. So this is a simple voltage alarm. It's gonna beep when it gets to a certain point. I don't even know what the point is, but I don't really wanna worry too much about it. Um, my favorite Latin cameo was here the other day flying with me and he accidentally stole my voltage alarm. <laughs> I know where you live, Esteban. So anyway, all right, next thing's next. We're gonna turn this off so we can bind, which means I'm gonna to have to get up here in a second. So we've got that off, throttle cuts on, sticks down, all the sticks are in our no normal position. Not that the sp position matters so much, it's just a good habit to have. Okay, now I'm gonna plug this in so I can get it juiced up. Okay, remember this is not set up, so it doesn't really matter just quite yet. But always treat a plane like it's gonna chop your hand off. And then when it doesn't, you can count it as a blessing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first things first, we're gonna press this button, initiate the binding process. You'll see the lights start flashing and you can stay there, camera crew. Okay. So I'm going way back here and I'm pressing the power while holding this bind button. It says binding, DSMX 22 milliseconds. Telemetry, then auto config. Okay, so that's for the telemetry that's unnecessary and useless. <laughs> because Horizon gives us many good things and yet they don't give us uh, pack voltage in our telemetry. I'm not sure, probably because they don't have it at this point. Okay, so what the heck is with those ailerons? Why are they both up like that? Oh, Flaps. yeah, I was like, that's strange for a factory setting. <laughs> it's because I'm in my non-neutral setting. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so the elevators are not hooked up. The, aileron, the ailerons are working, but the elevator's not hooked up. We're also gonna to check to see if we're in safe, which we should not be, and we're not. So now we can, at this point, take a second and hook these things up. Okay, guys. Wow, that has to come out a long a ways, lot. holy cow. See, I'm using my three fingers and I'm biting that thing hard. Okay, so I gotta get that out a little bit further. That feels like it's gonna come off of there. Boy, there ain't much hanging on. Oh. Okay. Okay, I'm into the meat of it again. Look at that, guys. Look at that. That's a long ways away. Okay, so in order to fix that, I'll show you. You need a Allen wrench, which is right here. Watch. 1.3 meter, 1.5 meter. There we go, 1.5 centimeter, millimeter. Push that through quite a bit, tighten it. Tighten it a lot, a lot more than you think. Then let's look back again. Yeah, we have much better light now. Okay, so now I need to just grab these with three points. So when I spin it, it doesn't just spin on the other side. Okay, so we're gonna go to the outside hole, I suppose. Do you remember what the actual drawings yeah. called for? Hmm. Okay. So there's that. That's not good enough. We need to go in a little bit more. Okay. Uh, another half turn. There we go. That's probably about it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Then push it through, then clip it. Give them an extreme close-up of that. See how it's flush here? And that's clipped all the way through. 
Okay. So now show them the other side. You just like go in the living room. Okay, so I'm just doing mechanical trim adjustment by holding this and then spinning kind of a lot. Now I need to make sure this is tight and I'm going to the outside hole. I think I need maybe a half a turn and then we should be good. Okay, then I'm gonna open this up by pulling it out like that. Line up with the hole, that feels good there and there. Snap it in, push back this little fuel tube and you're good to go. So now let's go back to radio setup stuff. Some of that physical stuff, it's like really pretty easy, but, oh, let's make sure the canopy goes on. It sure does. Okay, so now let's look from this side. Elevator up and down, obviously that's backwards. So let's go to servo setup, travel. Scroll over to reverse, elevator. <sighs> Do you see that it changed position? Mm -hmm. This one dropped more too. Okay, so we gotta fix that now, which is super annoying. So we're not in AS3X or anything, so at least it's not changing the position of it, absolute position of it. Slide that back with your fingernail, pop that off. You need to go out probably two, maybe three, three halves. Okay, that's good. Slide that back. This one needs to come out maybe half. Why does it do that when you reverse? I don't know. Sometimes servos do that. Just the home position is not quite not exactly. Exact. I don't know why it doesn't is the, is the answer. Okay. It's frustrating though. Half a turn, that's pretty damn good. Okay, good deal. Put your fuel tube back, make sure it's snapped. It is snapped. Okay, on the nose, flip it over. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left. Okay, that's backward too. So we're gonna scroll over to right aileron, click and then move. See, now left aileron, roll left. Roll right, elevator up, elevator down. Take off flaps or backward. Okay, so we can either flip the flap channel or we can just flip it here. <clears throat> Why don't we just flip it here? Which one is it? Oh, you know what? <clears throat> We're gonna flip it this way, it's a lot easier here. So we want that to be a negative value. And then we want this to also be a negative value. See how they're going down as I scroll because that's the position I'm in. Okay. <clears throat> so takeoff flaps still acting as ailerons, landing flaps still acting as ailerons, okay. So we'll set this back to maybe just a little bit more. And you know what we'll do? <clears throat> we'll probably go ahead and do 5% correction and 8% correction. And it's probably not gonna be necessary. So the elevator roll rolls the right way. Okay, so now let's set up forward programming. Now that we have all the controls going the correct direction, everything's good there. So click, scroll down to forward programming, click to enter. It takes a second to load, go to gyro settings, first time setup, lay it flat. <clears throat> Any changes, you have to reboot it or not reboot it, uh, do a first time setup. Okay, we're gonna continue. Then we're gonna set it on its nose like this. That helps it to differentiate between its positions. Okay, so let's look at the screen together, please, camera crew. Does that, does that look like what we just did? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we did it right. So the thing is spatially aware. <clears throat> Gain channel, that's gonna be the knob, which is auxiliary three. Okay, next, apply. It's rebooting. This is where if you had a prop, it could start, so be careful. OK, 
Okay, forward back, back into forward programming. You heard one dance, not two. That's what two dances sounds like. Other settings. Terra setting. F mode setup. That's just audible. It's on gear is what we're doing. Okay. Now watch this. Okay. So now we're going to go in and do first time safe setup. <clears throat> Same thing. Continue. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. This is where you'd make a correction if you're if you're inside of your plane, if that receiver was mounted at a slight angle or if it was mounted at a slight angle, you can correct for that here. It gives you the description there of how to do it. So this is AS3X, so safe is off. Safe mode. This is where I want safe, angle, level, envelope, transmitter mode, I don't even know what that is. There you go. Okay, so it's rebooting. This is where it would start and chop your hand off again. That's only happened once to us. Okay, so we should be basically done. So let's check. Throttle cuts on. Safe is technically on right now. Safe is active without giving throttle. Trying to find the quickest route to level. Look at the elevator. Yup. And yup. So we have the correct direction of correction. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn off safe. Now we just have AS3X, but no throttle's been given. I'm going to do that quickly. Okay, throttle cuts on. Now I'm going to look at every direction of travel and make sure it's moving. And you guys can't see, so I'm going to show you a trick. Turn your knob all the way to the upside. And then you can see a little bit better, but you still can't see. So what I'll do is just for the sake of the video, I'm going to go into forward programming, connect, Forward programming, connect. Sorry, it just takes a second. I jumped the gun. Gyro settings. AS3X settings. Gain sensitivity four times. Now watch this. Okay. Watch, watch, Megan. Off, halfway, all the way up. No yaw correction because there's no rudder. Okay, up is up, down is down, up is up, down is down, up is up, down is down. Now, check with flaps on, take off flaps, down is down, up is up, down is down, up is up, elevator up is up, down is down, full landing flaps, down is down, down is down, up is up, up is up, up is up, down is down. Check every setting. Flaps are off. Now, we can put this back to the middle setting, which is where we're gonna write it. And we're gonna go into forward programming and turn that back to one X. It never needs to really be more than one X, except for in extreme circumstances like 3D planes. Okay. Then we're done. So this thing's ready to fly, timer's cut. Everything's ready to rock and roll. We've got our expo set up. This plane went together really easy. I like the AR630. It's a little bit harder to set up than the Vector. If you're new to the hobby, get used to setting them up. It's not that hard. You'll figure it out, I promise. And we'll be here for you here at Brian Phillips RC. Hopefully you've already seen this fly and it was an amazing flight and you've already bought one from the link in the video description below. But if not, check it now. You can buy this transmitter. It's fantastic. It does just about everything you want. We've had one feature that we had to give up one time temporarily on one plane from Hangar 9. One out of hundreds. Well, not hundreds on this radio, but hundreds that we've reviewed. Okay, inside we've got the AR630 in here. Very happy with the AR630s, they are great. I prefer the 631 in slightly bigger models because the external antenna just gives me a little bit of peace of mind, even though it's five bucks more. Okay, there you have it. Eros does a great job. Really happy with their equipment. That's why we've been working with them. And if you wanna help support us when you buy this, they'll send us a small commission on your behalf, you pay nothing extra for it, which is really cool. So definitely when you're out there buying this plane from hobbyzone.com, 
by the receiver from HobbyZone.com as well, which is the AR630. It will be available, you only have to pay shipping once, which is nice. And then if you wanna buy the same exact battery, we've got the, uh, what was that, the, the Venom. Venom. It's a Venom pack and it does come with IC3 adapters, which is nice if you're using the chargers. Again, I'm recommending the S2200 right now. I've had that question a lot lately. And that is because it has all the bells and whistles. And if you're already blowing that much money on a charger, yep. get that charger. Mm -hmm. Don't get the S1200 or the S1400 or any of those other S's. Just get the S2200. I think it's a dual 400 watt. If you really wanna go fast, you need to get the expensive power supplies, but most people don't need to go for this because this power supply, I think it's like a lot. Like you could, for those power supplies would pay for this, I believe, S2200, smart charger. Do smart and dumb packs, do two at a time. Very happy power switch, I like that. Switchable, very good thing. So obviously we have links to all this stuff. We appreciate you guys watching. As always, great people at Arrows, uh, Hobby Zone, Help support our channel, help support the people that support us. Buy it from them if you like this plane. If you absolutely hate this plane, to be, to be perfectly frank, we don't care what planes you like. Just whatever plane you like, we, we're here to support you. If you like those planes better, if you like this plane better, if you like that plane better. We literally have thousands of videos to help you decide with your limited RC budget. And if you're like most people, you have a limited RC budget. Like this car, truck in this case. There are so many of them. There are so many good choices these days. But at the end of the day, if you can get a good choice here or you can get a good choice there, give us a pat on the back for helping you out if we did. Also, don't forget to like the video. The thumbs up helps to unpunish us from the uh, terrible performance that we have on YouTube because most of you don't need to see this entire radio set up every time, but we do it for you new pilots. We know that you need help and that, you know, those guys have been flying for seven or eight years or 10 years or 15 years or 30 years, don't need it, but we do it for you. So please definitely give us a like. And if you wanna support us in what we're doing, give us a like. Also, we have Patreon, and thanks especially to our patrons who support us month after month. We really appreciate it. PayPal is also there if you don't like monthly support. But really, the most equitable thing is to just buy the stuff that you love and that you're here to watch. Stay tuned. So much more to come. Thanks for watching, guys.